Hi my loves, Silem here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a corset with a yoke and a basque waistline. I'm also going to show you how to create and insert loops into your corsets. I also have other corset tutorials on the channel like Victorian corsets, overbust corsets. I have tutorials on all these different types of corsets. So if you want to learn how to make these types of these different types of corsets detailed tutorials are available on the channel the link to that corset tutorials um playlist will be in the in the description box down below without further ado let's get right into the video oh hey i didn't see you there <laughs> so i'm going to draft my basic bodies first now the the folded piece of paper on top is my front piece and the one below is my back piece now on the front piece, I'm just marking my bust point and under bust measurements, which is 10 and 13 respectively. Now as you can see, the front piece is longer than the back piece. That's because of the basque waistline. So you want it to be longer so that you can create that basque waistline. So I'm just going to go ahead and just extend those lines. Now I also marked my armhole measurement, which is um, 8 inches from the baseline. Now I'm dividing my bust measurement by 4 marking that on the bust point line and adding two inches allowance. I also divided my shape measurement by four, marked that on the under bust line and added two inches allowance as well. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and just mark that half length point, which is where the back um, piece ends. So that's like the, where the back piece stops, okay? Or the length of the back piece. I just wanted to also connect those points and now i'm just dividing my shoulder measurement by four placing that on the baseline marking that and adding one inch allowance now from the baseline downwards i went ahead to mark four inches which is half of the um you know distance from the shoulder to the armhole i did that so that i can just create this curve for the armhole now i'm going to just extend the line from the under bust all the way down i also went ahead to just mark that same um half length line which is where like I said, the back piece stopped. And then from that point, I just went ahead to just draw, draw a slanted line all the way to the end. Now, I had initially marked it to mark the length of the front piece to be 23, but I tried to reduce it to 22 because I felt 23 was too long. So that's what I just did. I just reduced it to 22 and then marked that same slanted line. Now, from the armhole line, you want to go down by half inch and go in from the fold by half inch as well okay now this will form the distance between the two cups you know and so once you have that you want to you want to place your your breast cup on your under bust so make sure that the bottom part of your breast cup is on your under bust line and then just go ahead and just trace you know the curve of the breast cup and then the next thing you want to do is go in by half an inch because you want your breast cup to fit nicely okay so you want to go in by half an inch so that that serves as your um seam allowance now if you want to know the size of cup you should be using I have a different video on that i'll leave the link to that video in the description box down below for the neckline because it's going to have a yoke i'm just making it three by three which is like the standard neckline and then i'm going i'm going to slap my shoulder by one inch from the baseline and i'm also going to go ahead and just mark that um my allowance for my um, zipper and then for my back neck I went down the depth is two inches but the width is three inches as well I also marked that same point when the you know I had marked for the front piece that's where the breast cup had um, you know stopped I marked that for my back as well and I'm just going to go ahead and just you know cut along the lines Now this is your yoke formed nicely. I'm also going to cut out the neck as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and just, um, you know, cut along that curved line I had created. Make sure you're cutting the one that you went in by half an inch and not the first one you trace when you place your breast cup okay it's easy to make a mistake and then cut the second one so try to keep that in mind and i'm just cutting open the zipper allowance as well and when i open the front piece this is what we have 
now for the back piece because i want to have that um corset loops at the back and i want the back to be open i'm taking out one inch from the bottom and two inches from the top that's aside from the regular zipper allowance okay i'm just cutting that out and when i open this up this is what it looks like so this is going to be the shape at the back i'm just going to go ahead and just label you know the pieces as back one and back two I've also gone ahead to just cut my um, fabric and my lining with the pattern. For the fabric, I I, I use the hair stay to gum the fabric, and fabric is a, a a raw silk. And then for the lining, I use a soft gum to gum it. Same thing with the front piece. For the fabric, I also used a um, hair stay to gum it, but for the lining, I used a soft gum. Okay, but I used the pattern for the front to cut these pieces. I just left about half an inch around. Now for my yoke, I cut it on a skin tone tool or skin skin tone net, whatever you want to call it. Initially, I didn't decide to double it, but later on, I decided to double it, as you'd see. But uh, you can decide to double yours if you want or not, depending on the quality of your skin tone tool. Now taking my front piece, I'm just going to go mark the center point. And then once I mark the center point, I'm just going to go ahead and just mark the style lines of where I'm going to insert my boning channels and subsequently insert my bonings into. But make sure that whatever you do on this side, you do will replicate on the other side. So if the distance between the middle line and one of the lines is four inches, make sure that it's the same on the other side. So just mark your style lines. If you want it to be slanted straight, however you want to, just go ahead and just mark it. Now for the back as well, I'm also going to go ahead and mark style lines for the back. Where I'm going to set the, you know, boning channels. Now I'm just going to use my bias tape. And I'm just going to go, and go ahead and place it on those lines I had um, drawn. And I'm just going to go ahead and just sew that down. Now guys, note that I did this on my lining. And that's because I want, I don't want my boning to show in front. So I did this on my lining. But if you want yours to show at if you want yours to show in front, you can go ahead and just do this on the front. That's on the fabric itself and not on the lining. So it depends on what you want. I don't want my own boning to show in front. That's why I did it like that. Now for the um the, the cup I'm using, I'm using a size 36 cup because my bust is 35 inches. You can go up to a size 38 even if your bust is also 35. But I decided to just use 36 and then double it. So to double it, I'm just using two cups. And I'm just sewing them together. And then I kind of placed one of the cups a bit higher than the other. Just so that it covers my bust a bit more. I hope that makes sense. So once I've done that, this is what we have. And then when it's double padded, it gives more... It's, it's, it gives more volume basically i'm gonna have to just cover my breast cup breast cups i have a tutorial on how to do that the link will be in the description box down below now as you can see i'm placing my lining on top of my fabric right sides facing and i'm going to go ahead and just sew them together The only part I'm not sewing is the curve where the breast cup is going to be inserted in and the, the bottom part as well. Now once I've done that, I'm just turning this to the right side and this is what we have. You want to go ahead and just press this flat and once you've pressed and ironed it flat, you can now go ahead and just sew along those curves. And this is what it looks like once we're done with that now for my cup i'm just going to go ahead and just fold it in half so that i can get the center point of the cup okay i'm just going to just create a notch there by just cutting it a bit and then i'm also going to do the same thing i'm going to fold you know the front piece making sure that the curve 
i get the center point of the curve basically and then i'm just going to go ahead and just mark that with the chalk now you want to align the cent mid points or center points of the cup with the mid points of you know that curve on your front piece and then you want to go ahead and just sew them together so guys i'm going to um film and upload a tutorial on how to create corsets where you actually create the cup okay i realized that i haven't done that i've gotten some requests on that so let me know in the comment section if you also want that how to create your own breast cups for your corset and then just create a corset using the corset cups that you made yourself and not you know the one that you have used like an already made breast cup like this one i'm showing you guys to do now just let me know in the comment section if something that you guys really really want although i have gotten some requests but it would you know it would really ginger me if you guys also request on this video that you want it okay so this is what we have once we've you know inserted the cup we're going to do the same thing for the other side and then just go ahead and just fold in whatever excess we have and then just sew that down I also went ahead to just weave you know the allowance when i joined both pieces join the cup to the you know bodies now as you can see like i mentioned i went ahead to just double this and the reason is because i'm using um you know a george fabric and you know with all the stones and beads and all of that it might be a lot of weight for the net to carry so i just decided to double it uh, that's why otherwise if it was just a very simple dress i was making that wasn't so heavy i wouldn't have to do that okay because the quality of net is actually a very good one so what i did was i just sewed it along sewed both um you know pieces along the neckline turned it um to the right side then i ironed that flat okay now i'm just folding it to get the midpoint and i'm also creating a notch I've also gone ahead to mark the midpoint of, you know, that center point. That's the point, the, the, the area between the cups. I'm going to try to just get the center point there. And then I'm just going to to just sew it right sides facing. Not necessarily right sides facing because the net either side can be the right side. But I just place the net on top of the piece and I'm just going to to just sew it. I sewed from the center to one end and from the center to the other end. Okay. now once we're done this is what we have okay it looks good already as you can see guys now for my loops i'm just going to take my bias tape again then i'm just going to fold it and then i'm just going to sew it down okay that's what's going to give me the what i'm going to use to create the loops and also i'm going to use this to you to create the rope that i'm going to use to lace you know on the loops as well now on the back piece i'm just taking measuring half half inch I'm just marking half half inches all along that um you know side and then I'm just going to go ahead and just place you know that the bias tape that I just sewed down just placing it and I'm just creating like a U shape that's how you create your loops basically it's really nothing difficult just creating a U shape and making sure that the the, the loop is facing inward okay and not outward out of the fabric just inward so that once you turn it with your um you know fabric everything is seamless now the same thing i did for the front piece of the yoke i'm also doing it for the back piece of the yoke as well since i'm doubling i place the two pieces together and then i'm just sewing them by the neck flipping them over so that you know that um the seam allowance and all is inside and then i'm just ironing it flat now this is what it looks like once i've ironed it flat now i'm just going to go ahead and just place it remember that we had cut out um you know the center point of the back so make sure that you keep that in mind when you are placing your yoke it's easy to just forget and just place your yoke such a way that it's equal but remember that you had cut out that part of the back that's the zipper allowance side of the back so that you have that opening okay so bear that in mind so i just sandwiched the yoke in between the fabric and the lining and i sewed that down after that i made sure that the allowance was facing the lining side and then I'm going to go ahead and just stop stitch, okay? I 
and then once i'm done with that i'm just closing that up and i'm just going to go ahead and just make sure that the net that's the yoke is out of the way when i'm sewing you know the i'm sewing it down basically by the side so now i'm just going to go ahead and just sew you know the lining and the fabric together making sure that the yoke is out of the way like i mentioned i'll do the same thing for the other side as well i'm just going to sew it closed and then i'm going to turn this to the right side and this is what we have now you can go ahead and just trim this you know and then put a button at the top or you can just trim this out so that you have like a very wide v-neck at the back or you can just make a slant so i decided to um trim mine with it with a curve so i can put a button at the top there so i just place the two back pieces together so i could you know cut them together and this is what it looks like now taking my boning i'm using a plastic boning that is quarter inch wide i'm using a quarter inch wide plastic boning because that is what is going to fit into the bias tape i just went ahead to just round the edges before i insert it now if you're using a half inch wide plastic boning chances are it's not going to enter into your bias tape okay it's going to be too tight or it's not going to enter at all depending on how the bias tape is because some of these bias tapes these days they make it very tiny so bear that in mind if you're using a half inch wide plastic bone you want to have to, you're going to have to create your boning channels by yourself such that it can accommodate the width of your plastic boning okay so please just bear that in mind when you're deciding what plastic boning to get so once i inserted the boning at the back piece i just went ahead to just make sure that i trimmed it making sure that it's half inch the length is half inch um less than the actual length of the boning channel so that by the time i sew it down or by the amount to join it to the bottom part of the dress there i don't run into any issues so the same thing with this front piece i just inserted the bonings but i made sure that the length was half inch less than the boning channel so that now that i'm sewing it i don't you know sew on top of the boning and then my needle breaks now for to attach my you know basque waistline and um, bodies to the skirt part i'm just placing the bodies on top of the skirt pad i'm just going to go ahead and just mark the outline okay now once i've done that i'm just going to go ahead and just sew along that line that i marked okay Now, once i'm done with that i'm just going to go ahead and just cut um you know following that outline but i'm going to cut above the line by half an inch okay so you know the parts the line i drew and then i sewed on i'm just going to go ahead and just cut along that line but above it by half an inch okay now once i'm done with that i'm just taking my bodice again and then i'm just going to place it right sides facing now starting at the center i'm going to sew join both pieces from the center to one side and from the center to the other side. Now once I'm done, this is what we have, okay? It's nice and neat. Now for the back piece, I'm just going to go ahead and just place in the back piece, the back bodice piece, right sides facing with the back skirt piece, okay? Now I'm just going to go ahead and just sew them together with half of an inch seam allowance. And this is all what we have, okay? So obviously the next thing you want to do is join both pieces together. Yeah, this is how to draft, cut and sew a corset with a yoke and a bass waistline. 